Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. I am covering series of videos on the Transfer of Properties Act 1882. We have seen four videos already. The first one covering the chapter one that is on majorly the definition part and structure of the property act completely. And then we have covered three videos on chapter number two, the first part that is section number five to nine covering the general principles in three different videos. The chapter 2 starts from section 5 to 53a and in the second part of this chapter 2 I am covering restriction on alienation of property. The section number 10, 11, 12, 17 and 18 are covering restriction on alienation of property under Property Act 1882. I have covered this particular subject that is restriction on alienation of property into three different videos. This first video I am reserving for section number 10 because I am giving a brief explanation on the entire concept of alienation of property and section 10 is quite interesting and little lengthy. So I am reserving this video for section 10 alone along with the structure of restriction on alienation of property. By watching my video, it will help you to get the entire notes. So the, state, the lazy students like me can just take screenshot of the video and use that as a note, notes for their exam preparation. I forgot to add the word meaning of alienation in this presentation. However, I will brief on the dictionary meaning of alienation. You can make a note of it to understand the word meaning as per dictionary uh, when it comes to property the transfer of the ownership of property right i repeat alienation means the transfer of the ownership of property right that means you have a property and when you transfer your right to someone else your ownership is transferred and that is called alienation or alienation of property i already told that this session will focus on section number 10 however before going to section number 10 let us understand the structure of restriction of alienation of property when i say restriction of alienation of property under property act 1882 i repeat these sections by hearing it two three times you will by heart the sections that is 10 11 12 17 and 18 section number 10 11 12 17 and 18 what do they say in a holistic way i will give what does they cover the first thing is with transfer of property transferer transfers the complete interest of his property to the transferee and with the action of transferer his rights on the property comes to an end when i say a transferer transfers his property i am focusing on sale exchange and gift when this kind of transaction happens the transferer completely loses his interest as well as rights on that particular property and transferee will get all that rights as well as interest that's the first very important point under alienation of property the second thing is during such transfer if transferer puts any restrictions for the free enjoyment or alienation of the property the transferer the transfer becomes valid and such conditions become void sorry i thought there is a spelling mistake there is none any so during such transfer that means when a transferer transfers to a transferee his property if transferer try put some restrictions which stops free enjoyment of the property of transferee or if it restricts the alienation of property from the transferee then the transfer becomes valid and those conditions become void hope that's easy and clear jabbi एक ट्रांसफरर ने एक प्रॉपर्टी को ट्रांसफर ही को ट्रांसफर करता है उसके साथ-साथ उनका जो इंटरेस्ट होगा और राइट्स होगा दोनों खत्म हो जाता है और ट्रांसफरी को वो सब मिल जाता है अगर 
वो करते वक्त ट्रांसफर में कुछ कंडीशन डाल देता है उससे ट्रांसफरी को वो जो राइट्स है वो एंजॉय करने में फुल्ली पॉसिबल नहीं होता है नहीं तो एलिनेशन करने का रिस्ट्रिक्शन होता है तो द ट्रांसफर विल बिकम वैलिड और जो भी कंडीशन से वो वॉइड हो जाता है नाउ दिस इज डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल अंडर द एबो सेक्शन सो सेक्शन नंबर टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व सेवनटीन एंड एटीन आर डिस्कसिंग दीज थिंग्स इन डिटेल दैट इज अंडरस्टैंड वॉट डू दे से let's understand the structure whenever i give a lecture i start with structure because we need to understand the structure first so that we know how exactly to prepare an answer in exam so whenever there is a question on alienation of property you need to remember there are five major sections which are 10 11 12 17 and 18 what do they say section number 10 deals with condition restraining alienation section number 11 deals with restriction on free enjoyment of property the first one speaks on alienation second one speaks on free enjoyment of property section 12 speaks upon conditions making interest determinable on insolvency or attempted alienation so section 12 basically focuses on uh, conditions during insolvency and attempted alienation section 17 and 18 are dealing with direction for accumulation of income or doctrine of accumulation so there are two things under 17 and 18 that is accumulation of income or doctrine of accumulation this is the structure on uh, alienation of property now let's focus on section number 10 that is conditions restraining alienation alienation what does the act has to say i will read through when the property is transferred subject to a condition or limitation absolutely restraining the transferee or any person claiming under him from parting with or disposing of his interest in the property the conditions or limitations is void except in the case of a lease where the conditions is for the benefit of the lesser or those claiming under him Yeah, come here. Hey guys, subscribe my father's channel. That's my son. So please subscribe my channel, like my videos, share uh, for the benefit of others. Now let's understand in bit piece that what exactly the definition has to say. I read the definition for you. So here it is dealing with property transferred subject to a condition or limitation. okay there is a condition or limitation which absolutely restrains the transferee wo kya karta hai it absolutely restricts the power or rights of transferee or any person claiming under him for parting with disposing of his interest in the property so he cannot basically he cannot sell it to anybody else in such condition the limitation is void and it further says except in the case of lease so one need to be very clear this doesn't apply in the case of lease this applies during exchange gift or sale so i have given two major aspects there one restraining the sale that is condition saying shouldn't sell in that case the condition becomes void the transfer become valid or restraining the price for example condition of selling with specific price or market price etc for example a is selling a land to b and he says if b want to sell the land he can sell only to person x okay that is specified or he will say uh, for the specified price for example he has to sell only for 10 lakh rupees or he will put a condition that he can sell only for the market price all those conditions will become void but the transfer becomes valid please remember transfer becomes valid only such conditions will become void that is under section number 10 now there are exceptions the first except exceptions is benefit of lesser now in case of lease there is 
possibility of right to re-entry, there is restriction to sublease, there is restric restriction to alienation. Now, uh, in sales, exchange and gifts, there is no possibility of putting any complete restriction. But in the case of lease, there is always exception. The second part of the definition is dealing with the exception. If you didn't observe, please check the last three lines where which says except in case of a lease where the condition is for the benefit of the lesser or those claiming under him. So that way the lease becomes an exception for this alienation of property where the lesser gets the power of right to re-entry that if there is any uh, non-payment or default in payment or any structural change in the property which was a part of agreement that it shouldn't be made all the stuff he get the right to re-entry and restriction to sublease that means I got a property on lease I cannot sublease to anybody because the lease itself says this is only for this 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 purpose only and alienation that I am in lease for in a particular property I don't have any right to sell that property I am I can only enjoy the property and there it ends as per the agreement. Now the second one benefit of women. The first one is benefit of lesser which is covering under lease. Second one benefit of women that is coverture mostly this is this is not applicable for Hindu, Muslim or uh, Buddhist. I think I have covered that in the uh, de detail. First understand what is the word meaning of coverture when you are writing this part benefit of women definitely try to use the word coverture which will increase the weightage of your answer coverture the dictionary meaning is the legal status of a married woman considered to be under her husband's protection and authority whenever a girl get married it, it is believed that her legal status will be protected from her husband and it will be the authority will be with the husband with that assumption the, there is an exception under the alienation of property for example if a brother gives some property to his sister who is getting married he can always say that she cannot sell the property to anybody else except for enjoying the property such conditions can be put because there are several reasons which I have listed the first reason is to ensure that transfer doesn't happen with the influence of husband for the benefit of husband. Now the brother has given a gift to his sister thinking that sometime it will come to use for her welfare. Now if he gives full right to his sister she might get she might get influence from her husband and sell to any anybody and the benefit will go to husband and sister will lose the property as well as the benefit also there are chances so under christianity these clauses will work that she cannot alienate the property but can utilize enjoy the property and a widow has full right on her property remember only till the extent of her husband is alive she cannot sell it to anyone but the moment she becomes a widow if her husband dies then she can do anything with the property that she has got through her uh, brother or anybody for that matter that right will be there with her this is not applicable under hindu Mohammedan, and buddhist law this exception is only applicable among the christians and others who are not hindu Mohammedan, or buddhist so i hope the exceptions are clear there are two the first one covers in the case of lease where there is a benefit of lesser to right right to re-entry restriction on sublease and alienation the second one covers with coercion that is benefit for a woman under uh, Christianity and other any other religion except for Hindu, Muslim and Buddhism where till the time her husband is alive she cannot alienate the property to ensure that it is not gone in the interest of her husband alone. Hope that is clear. Let's move on. Now types of restriction. There are two major types of restriction. Let's understand what is the first type of restriction that is absolute restriction absolute means 100% restrictions in that case the conditions restraining alienation absolutely here the one who gets the property buys the property that is transferee cannot sell that is under absolute restraint restriction 
so in such case transfer become valid and conditions become void agar koi sell karta hai transfer ko the transferer ne bola hoga ki ye property kisi ko bhi sell nahi kar sakta hai and except for the exception that we have read in previous slide ye jo transaction hai usme transfer valid hota hai aur condition void ho jata hai conditions like should not sell or should sell for particular price everything becomes void in this scenario now there are a few major case laws i will go through them to help you to increase the weightage of your answers there are two major case laws here one is mohammad raya and abbas bandi in this case what happens when the partition happened there was a condition that the father and sons whoever want to sell the property uh, whichever they have gone through the partition they can sell only among the family members now what happened when someone wanted to sell the property the family members quoted very less for such property now that becomes very difficult for anyone to accept and move on so what a family member did he put a case that this condition is making loss to him and it was in this court the court it was in this case that the court held that such condition is void there can be a condition that preference should be given to the family members but if it is says only to the family members such condition is completely restraining from the alienation of property to anybody else so it was held in the court that it is void so the members can sell in outside market also that was on mohammad raya versus abbas bandi the second case rosher versus rosher where it was mentioned in the agreement while transferring the property to the transferee that the property should be sold at dollar 3000 only whenever it is been selling so after few years when the transferee wanted to sell the property the market value was not less than dollar 15000 now just because of the condition that they had during the transfer the transferee was not ready to end up in a loss so when he she approached the court it was held by the court that such condition is void so remember in all this scenario the transfer becomes valid and such condition which fully restricts the alienation with a condition of limited members or a particular price everything will become void that is on absolute restriction now there is a second part which says partial restriction in absolute restriction there is complete restriction on the transfer of property which may be with price or the people everything but let us understand what does partial restriction handles with partial restrictions on the transferee when the property is transferred there will be partial restrictions on the transferee in this case transfer will become valid and condition will also become valid but what are the conditions conditions like preference or limiting a particular person etc so there can be preference coming as a restriction or limiting a particular person will come as a restriction and this becomes valid let us understand through few of the case laws the first one is sanju balu versus jyotirmayi here in this case it was held that the restriction is valid because there was a clause saying that the transfer of property is restricted from gifting except for religious reason now he can sell the property exchange of property but if he she is gifting then that can be gifted to anything else except the religion reason so for religion purpose it was not uh, allowed to transfer in this particular case and this was only for that particular subject the transfer has transferer has restricted so the case was valid both transfer as well as condition proved to be valid the second case doe versus mac person here 
two sisters had property and they wanted to sell the property and they had to sell the property to their sisters or children on preference so what the what was the condition these two sisters who had property they can transfer the property to their sister or the the sister's children on preference but of course if they are not have any interest and if they don't have any issues they can of course go and sell to anybody else that was the condition in that case the preference was given for the sisters and their children so the condition was treated as valid now the third case devi dayal versus ghastia there was a condition that if the transferee wants to sell the property he has to resell only to the transferor condition to sell back only to the transferor for the same price and only on denial he can sell to other now for example i am selling a property today for rupees 2 lakh and i am putting a condition that any time the transferee who is buying my property want to sell the property should sell back to me only and for the same price this happened in the year imagine 2020 after 20 years if the transferee want to sell he will he has to sell the property to me only for rupees 2 lakh by 20 years the value of money will also go and you never know what is the kind of demand supply available in the market so such conditions become invalid and those partial restrictions will not be accepted by law hope the partial restraint restriction is clear to you with that i am concluding this session this session has focused on the structure of alienation of property the basics on section number 10 11 12 17 and 18 and focused on section number 10 hope this helps uh, take screenshot for your exam preparation and all the very best watch more videos on this series to understand the concept completely thank you so much